Hi everybody, thank you for watching. So today's video is going to be a get ready with me and this is actually like my first get ready with me on my channel. I'm just gonna be doing one of like my go-to makeup looks that I've done for so often, like if I can't figure out what to do, this is the look that I go for. Pretty simple, easy to do, and that's why it's one of my go-to looks. But it is also going to be a collab video with my friend Liz Williams here on YouTube. I'm so excited to collab with Liz. I love watching her videos. I think she is fantastic. I will leave all the links to her in the description box below to her channel and to her Instagram, and I sincerely hope that you will check her out. She has become one of my good friends here, and... I love making new friendships, so I was excited to collab with her on this Get Ready With Me, but we're also going to make it a story time feature. We both had kind of been thinking about doing some sort of story time video on our channel, but we weren't quite sure what to do or how to do it, and so we decided to incorporate it with a Get Ready With Me, so that way we're not just sitting here talking to you, but we're also like doing makeup at the same time. We thought that would be a fun idea. So yeah, make sure to check out Liz's channel below, but now why don't we hop into the Get Ready With Me slash story time. Yeah, I have really large hair right now. Yes, I know this. I had braids in for like three days. But first I'm gonna prime my face. I'm gonna use the Makeup Forever Step One Smoothing Primer. So the story that I decided that I'm gonna share with you guys is how I went from having my maid of honor be my best friend of seven years to her completely cutting off all communication with me just dropping me like it was hot right after my wedding. I just kind of feel like I've, I was never given the opportunity to tell my side of the story. And I just want to be able to share my side of the story. Not that I feel like this girl is going to watch it all because I can't imagine why she would or why she would care. But I do have like a life lesson that I learned out of the entire thing that I want to share with you guys. But I have seen, I've been watching like some more story time videos and wedding ones are very popular and especially when it deals with like friendships. I know too many people who have lost friends in the wedding process for a slew of different reasons. I think I'm the only one who doesn't actually know why she lost a friendship, <laughs> which is very weird. But I don't, I don't know why that is and that's very, very interesting but also very, very heartbreaking. Like the number of times from people that I know in real life and now people that I'm watching on YouTube that are saying that they lost friendships during a wedding and it's like, why is that? So this one is just like my go-to foundation right now. I can't stop using it. It's the True Match Lumi. I use my Sigma F80 brush to apply it. Obviously, I don't want to say my friend's name so I'm going to use the name Lainey, like a backstory. Lainey and I met in college. We went to the same college. We lived on the same floor. We became friends that way. So we had been friends for seven years and she was just my best friend. My husband was good friends with her husband. I was a bridesmaid in her wedding. I got engaged. She was the first person besides my family that I called. And just a couple weeks later, you know, I asked her if she would be my maid of honor and she said yes. Um, for concealer, I'm gonna use the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer. I'm gonna buff that in using the Morphe G2, one of my favorite brushes. I was excited, she created a Pinterest board for my wedding and everything was going so smoothly up until my bachelorette party. So I live in Iowa and for my bachelorette party, I wanted to go to Kansas City, which is just a couple hours from where I live. I wanted to go to Oceans of Fun, which is like an outdoor water park and then go to the Kansas City Power and Light District after. Lainey also did her bachelorette party there. We went to Worlds of Fun, which is like the amusement part of Oceans of Fun because hers was a little bit earlier in the season. So we did the amusement park for her and then the, did the Power and Light. And I'm gonna set my concealer with the Rimmel Stay Matte and my e.l.f. Small Tapered Brush. The morning that we met for the bachelorette party, I kind of thought that Lainey was kind of acting just kind of off, like she was just kind of acting a little bit different to me. I actually rode in a separate car to Kansas City from her, so I wasn't really able to talk to her, or like gauge her at all. And then when we got to Oceans of Fun, we immediately went to like the adult pool and we got drinks and we were just kind of laying around, but like I didn't go to Oceans of Fun for my bachelorette party to sit in a pool. Like I wanna go on rides, I wanna go on the slides. Like yeah, I'm 29 years old, but I'm like a teenager at heart. Like I love that kind of stuff. I love amusement parks, I love water parks. Like I wanted to go ride the rides. And so I was telling some of my friends like, you know, hey, when are we gonna go do that? And you know, a, a 
handful of them were like, yeah, you know, let's go do it right now. And to Lainey, I was like, hey, we're going to go ride the rides. And she looked at me and she goes, I am not riding rides. And I was like, oh, okay. I mean, it's my bachelorette party. That's kind of weird, right? Like, if I'm like, hey, I want to go do this and I want the group to do this, shouldn't my maid of honor be the first one that's like, heck yeah, let's go, let's get in line for the slide, like, what are we doing? Like, let's, let's go? I was like, okay. So actually, half the group stayed back with her at the pool and then the other half came with me and we did, like, the rides and stuff and it was a lot of fun, but I was really, like, hurt at that point. Like, why would she not want to do this with me? Did she not want to go here? Like at her bachelorette party when she was like, hey, I want to go on these rides, I wasn't like, mm, nope, I'm not going to do that. And I wasn't even a maid of honor. Like, I don't know. It was just, it was very, very bizarre. For my eyes, I'm going to be using Makeup Geek shadows. I, but the first color that I'm going to use is right here. It's Peach Smoothie. I'm going to use my Morphe M433, and I'm just going to apply this into the crease. You know, I thought that was weird, but the group of us that went on the rides, we came back, and Lainey appeared to be like, flirting with a guy at the pool which I'm like okay no big deal I mean yeah you're married but like whatever we're not dead even if we're married but I'm like if she didn't go with me on the rides because she wanted to sit back and like talk to guys that's really weird and that's really inconsiderate that's not who she is so I was just like super super confused and so I'm upset at this point but like okay what can I do we leave and we get to the hotel where we're gonna be staying and we start like getting ready for the night and stuff and she is just acting like she doesn't want anything to do with me she's not talking to me she's not asking me if like I need anything my sisters were there trying to help me out my best friend Hallie was there who was another bridesmaid and she was trying to like run the show I felt so bad for her the one that was like okay let's open gifts or hey here's the stuff that we got you you know like a tiny hat that said bride to be and here's your sash and I'm like what is going on and even my sisters were like, is, is something wrong with Lainey? And I'm like, you know, I, I'm not sure, but I'm going to try to find out. And so when we went to dinner, as we were walking to dinner, I kind of pulled her aside and I just said, you know, hey, is everything okay? And she looked at me like I was dumb and was like, yeah. I'm like, well, you're just acting kind of weird. Like, I just wanted to make sure everything was okay. If there's, you know, any issues, like, let's work it out now. And she's like, no, everything's fine. I'm just hungry. Like, okay. So we get to dinner, she doesn't sit by me, but you know, no big deal, whatever. We're playing games, she won't participate in the games, we're taking photos, she won't take photos. I'm like, this is not my best friend. I don't know what she's doing, but she's really, really hurting my feelings right now. The night continues to progress. She isn't by me at all. There was a point in the night where a guy came up and he was like, hey, I'm with a bachelor party and we want you to take like a shot with the bachelor. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I have like a drink in my hand, I have a clutch, and I'm like looking around for someone to grab it. And he goes, where's your maid of honor? And I looked around and I was like, um, I actually, I don't know. And he goes, isn't she supposed to be by your side? I was like, yeah, that's weird, right? Like, if you look back at the pictures from my bachelorette party, she's in two of them, I think. And they're both like staged group shots. But once we actually get out to the Power and Light District and we start going around to different bars, she's not in any of those photos. Most of the time, I didn't even know where she was. She just kept going off and disappearing by herself. I mean, what? So now I'm going to use the shade Coco Bear on my Morphe M441 brush. And I'm just going to place that into the crease as well, just to kind of darken everything up. I'm upset. I'm upset at my bachelorette party. I don't know what to do. My best friend is ignoring me. She's ignoring the other guests. She clearly is not giving a hoot about me. And it's bizarre. I'm I'm trying not to let my emotions show too much because I have, you know, other girls there that are trying so hard to make sure I'm having a good time and I'm trying not to like ruin it for everyone. But then someone comes up to me and says hey, we just saw Lainey do a shot with the bartender from an unmarked bottle. Like, he pulled a bottle out from under the bar, it had no label on it, no nothing on it, and only she took a shot from it. I mean, where does your mind go? It goes to she just ingested something that could be harmful to her. Don't know what to do. You know, she keeps disappearing anyways. What are we supposed to do with her? And I'm like, guys, I don't, I don't know what to do. She's... 
she's ruining my night i don't know why she's doing this i don't know why she's acting this way i've never seen her act that way in our seven years of friendship never seen anything like it except for the night of my bachelorette party and so my sister's like you know I, I think she just needs to go back to the hotel i don't know what she just took but in case it was something you know we can't risk her you know whatever and i'm like okay that's fine so I leave at one point. I leave my bachelorette party. There was a couple other girlfriends that were down there for a concert and they said that they were going to a different bar and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go with them. And I went with them and no one else from my bachelorette party followed me or even noticed I was gone because they were all too concerned with Lainey and what she had possibly just taken and trying to get her to leave the bar. No one noticed that the bachelorette left her party because my maid of honor was causing such a scene. Like, seriously? seriously finally meet up again and now my sister my sister-in-law is basically in an argument with my maid of honor and i had said hey i want to go to this bar and my maid of honor had said i want to go over here and my sister said well i think we should go to this bar because samantha wants to be there and laney snapped at her yelled at her and the look on my sister's face was just like, oh, hell no. And that was when the other girls were like, you need to leave. Like, you just, you need to leave. You're cut off. You need to leave. You're being belligerent. Now you're just being rude to family. Like, you gotta go. So another girl ended up taking her back to the hotel. And we tried to, you know, continue on our night and have fun. But I was like, who does that? Who acts that way? at anybody's bachelorette party, whether it be your best friend, whether it be a family member, whether it just be a friend of yours, who acts that way at a bachelorette party? Blew my mind. We continue on with the night. The next morning comes. We stop for breakfast. My maid of honor won't look at me. She won't talk to me. She won't say anything to me. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. I don't even get an apology. I don't even get anything from her. Like, what? And, you know, in the car ride home, we just talked about it a little bit, but I think one of those friends said something to her like, hey, I think you need to reach out. Like, your behavior was kind of weird last night. And she sent me a text message that day and, you know, was like, I don't know what happened last night, but I hope you're not mad at me. You know, I can't imagine not having you in my life. And I'm like, okay. So at this point, we're, I believe we're three weeks away to my wedding. And I'm like, okay, what am I supposed to do? Like you know, prolong this fight or just get over it. You know, what do I do? And so I was like, well, let's just have lunch and like try to talk it out, you know, whatever. We all have bad nights. That sucks that you picked my bachelorette party to have the worst night of your life that I have ever seen, but whatever, let's talk about it. So we had lunch and we tried to talk about it. And what she said to me was, I just forgot it was your bachelorette party. I just thought it was a girl's night out. You planned my bachelorette party. You booked the hotels. You made the Facebook group. You invited people. How did you forget it was my bachelorette party? I had a goddamn sash on with a tiny hat on my head that said bride to be. How did you forget it was my bachelorette party? I'm, I'm stressed enough. It's three weeks to my wedding. I was feeling very overwhelmed. A lot of different feelings, you know, go on when you're gonna get married anyways, and then the stress of trying to put everything together, and now I got this situation going on. And I'm like, you know what, whatever. Let's just forget about it. We've been friends for seven years. We've been through good and bad together. Yes, this sucked. This sucked a lot. This really deeply hurt me that you would behave like that and that you would treat my family the way you did, but let's just move on. Let's just forget about it. After that situation happened, and I thought things would be okay, you know, whatever, we're gonna move on, everything's gonna be fine. I think the situation's gonna be okay, and then she just starts not caring at all about the wedding plans. She says that she can't come to certain dress appointments with me. She had a job to like make a slideshow for us. At the last minute, she was like, oh, I actually can't make that. And me and my husband were scrambling trying to make the slideshow. Uh, she even said at one point she didn't think she could make the rehearsal dinner because she couldn't get off work. And I'm just thinking to myself like, what are you talking about? Like, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of Bitten, which is a really cool, like, reddish shade in my Sigma E25 brush, and I'm just gonna kind of, like, delicately place this into the outer V. It's happening, and I'm starting to freak out. Like, 
she all of a sudden doesn't care about wedding plans. She's flaking out on me. I, I don't know what to do. You know, I thought we talked this through, but apparently I was wrong. Like, what am I supposed to do? And my mom was like, you need to not have her as your maid of honor. Is she even going to show up on your wedding day? And I'm like, I have no idea. The programs have already been printed. Obviously, we're th now we're two weeks away. I don't have time for someone else to go buy a dress to match everybody. Like, what am I supposed to do? So we just left it. You know, the wedding day came and went, and it was fine. I mean, honestly, your wedding day is one of the most overwhelming days of your life. I really don't remember a whole lot from it. It went by so fast. You know, it was such a blur, but it was a lot of fun. She gave a nice speech. You know, everything seemed okay to me. A little hurt that she didn't, like spend the night at the location. We weren't too far out of town, but you know, everyone kind of like got together the next morning, but my maid of honor is not there because she couldn't find someone to watch her dogs. I mean, I had a 13 month engagement. My wedding date was always out there. Like you couldn't find someone to watch your dogs on my wedding day, really? But okay. And then after that, I would text her and call her. She never once answered any of my calls. Her text messages, I think maybe she answered like three of my text messages, but it was always like something very short and brief. And if it was ever like, hey, you want to get together? It was a no. And, you know, I started getting more aggressive in my texts as the time went by. Like, hey, I, you know, feel like something's wrong here. You want to get together and talk about it. And I would either just be ignored or I'd get a no. And then on Christmas Day, I realized that she unfriended me on Facebook. And I was like, are you serious right now? So I sent her a message and was just like, see, we're not friends on Facebook anymore. Like, are, are you ever going to give me an idea of what happened and why you're so mad at me? Or give me a chance to explain if I need to explain something? Like, what's going on? And her response was basically, she was sorry that she unfriended me and she did it in like the heat of the moment. She's not ready emotionally to talk to me, but she hopes that I have a nice life. And I'm like, okay. And I'm trying to write back and I'm saying, I don't know what it is that I did. Like, I thought I was being the bigger person after my bachelorette party to be like, okay, let's put this behind us. But you're still dragging this out. And I don't actually know what happened here. Like, you get that, right? And her responses back to me were so mean and so cruel. And I don't know why. Like... Even now, it's been almost three years, and, pe and people are still like, hey, did you ever find out why you and Lainey aren't friends anymore? And I'm like, nope. Never figured that out. For me to be cut out of someone's life who had been my best friend for seven years, in my opinion, I would have to do something incredibly horrible for that to happen. I would. The only two things I could come up with that I could have done was like slept with her husband or killed her dog. I promise you that I did not do those things. So I don't know what it is that I could have possibly done to someone to deserve what she did to me. I don't know what I did to deserve how she treated me and my friends and my family and my bachelorette party. And I don't know what I did to deserve the way that she treated me after my wedding. And one thing that I tried to say in my messages to her was, do you know how hard it is to look at my wedding photos and see you next to me in all of these photos? Like, I don't even want to put my wedding photos up around my house because I have this reminder of, hey, this was my best friend, the girl that I asked to be my right arm in my wedding. And she just cut me out of her life like it meant absolutely nothing to her. And her response back to that was, your wedding day has nothing to do with this and our situation shouldn't take away from your wedding. But it's like, do you not understand? Do you not get what you did? Do you not get this? I do not understand how she does not get this. This shade right here, which is Shimmer Shimmer, really shimmery shade on my Sigma E54. And I'm just going to dust that onto the inner part of my eyes. It hurt me and you know I would talk to my husband and I talked to my friends and they would just say like don't give up you know keep trying to message her one of these days she's gonna talk to you like whatever she's mad about she's gonna have to to talk to you about it and I'm like okay so I don't give up I keep messaging her texting her I'm getting nothing back I'm getting nothing back and at one point I got frustrated at like what is her husband saying and what are her other friends saying like oh no just ignore her it's cool like what this is the Maybelline Master Precise Liner in Black, one of my favorite liners, and just making a pretty simple wing. One time where I messaged her and she agreed to meet with me. And I was getting ready to go on my honeymoon because I went a few months later. And so I said, how about after my honeymoon, I let you know when I'm back and then we can plan something. And she said yes. I sent her an email when I was back and said, do any of these dates work? She did not respond. 
within about two weeks of that, both of us went to a bachelorette party for a friend. And while there, I went up to her and I just said, you know, hey, do you want to still get together? And she just freaked out on me, like freaked out on me. I mean, she was yelling at me and she was causing a scene. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. I don't know what your problem is like all I did was ask you if you still wanted to get together like you had said you did in your last message and she was just yelling and screaming and I was so embarrassed and I was embarrassed for the bachelorette because I'm like don't you dare cause a scene at someone else's bachelorette party that is so disrespectful like you already did it once let's get it together and I just was like okay like I'm not even gonna deal with you once again you're super drunk at a bachelorette party I'm sober like let's just not even do this and we went outside and we were going to like a different place to get food and we're all walking together There's a group of people walking together and she happens to be walking in front of me and she turns around and yells at me why are you following me and i'm like because we're all going to coach's pizza and she just turned around and was like oh I'm like, oh my word. Needless to say, after that, like, I really didn't want anything to do with her. I was like, I don't know who would treat a friend this way. I just keep going back to that. Who treats a friend that way? And who, when a friend is saying, hey, I honestly, Scout's Honor, don't know what's going on. Can you please fill me in? And for them to basically do the whole, you know what you did. No, I don't. Because why would I keep asking you if I knew what I did? I would not do that. Like, this is annoying. Three years later, I wouldn't still be talking about it and being like, man, I wonder what it was that I did to that chick. I just can't figure it out. To line my waterline, I'm going to come in with the Maybelline Skinny Pencil. It still really, really bothers me. My E36 brush from Morphe, I'm going to pick up some Coco Bear first and run that on the lower lash line. Right before my two-year wedding anniversary, so last year, September, that I actually reached out to her on Facebook again. And just said, hey, I know time has passed, but maybe now, you know, things will have calmed down. Would you like to grab a coffee sometime and maybe talk about what happened? Because I still don't know what exactly happened and what made me lose this friendship. And I, you know, would still like an explanation. And she wrote back and said, no, she didn't think it was worth it. Too much time had passed and wasn't worth it. Such a hard feeling to put yourself out there and be rejected especially by someone that you love and that you respect it for so many years that was very confusing and so after that i'm like you know what i just can't do it anymore like my husband my family my friends are still saying like maybe one day like don't give up maybe next year try again and i'm like what's the what's the point like because i know i no longer think that she's not only a good friend but i no longer think that she's a good person good people don't treat people like how she treated me and knowing, knowing myself that I truly did not do anything to her to deserve that makes her not a good person in my book and makes her not someone that I would want to be friends with anymore. If there's anything that I want to say is that be mindful of the way that you treat other people. I mean, it, it taught me that when I'm going through something, you know, the best thing to do is talk it out with someone because clearly there was some sort of miscommunication somewhere with us and I don't know where it was. And so, you know, that would be my advice was just try to communicate with people. But if they're not good for you, cut them out of your life because you don't need that. So next I'm gonna pick up a little bit of Bitten and put that in the lower lash line as well. Another lesson that I learned out of all of this is that it's really sad to me, but this whole situation took away a lot of my self-confidence and it made me doubt a lot of things about myself. Literally just driving me insane. I mean, it truly was driving me crazy that I could not think of what I, what I could have done to this person to make them treat me the way that they did. But I also lost a lot of self-confidence in myself and I also forgot how to stand up for myself when i would have problems with even family members or close friends like when we would get in fights i would not say my piece i would just i would just hunker down and i would take it and i had a friend who just went off on me one time and called me the worst names and i sat there and i took it because i was like what if i try to fight back for myself then i'm going to lose another friend and i just sat there and i took being called some of the worst names and i took it because my friend, my maid of honor, completely shook my confidence in myself. And if there's one thing that I just want to like tell you guys is don't lose that. 
because that was the day that I realized how much it affected so many more areas in my life than just like losing a friendship but it really had a deep effect on me as a person and that's when I got even more upset and was like I, I cannot let people treat me like this. I can't be treated as a doormat because now I'm so afraid that any little thing that I do I'm just gonna lose friends left and right. Like that's not fair to me. So that was that was a really eye-opening day and it's what kind of made me you know change the way that I thought and you know just think you can't let this go on you can't let this affect your life the way that you've been letting it affect you like losing a friendship like that I think is really really hard to me I consider it like a breakup you know I was with this person for seven years she knows things about me that I would never tell anyone else lose that one day with no explanation and no reasoning and not even get to say goodbye it's really hard. I finish up the face quick and use the Too Faced Chocolate Soleil bronzer and my Morphe M530 brush. These are just some of my lessons, like whatever story time I decide I want to tell you guys, if you guys do want to see more story times, you know, I don't want to just sit here and tell a story. I want it to somehow reflect on a lesson that I learned and hopefully I can bring back to you. It's exactly what I do in all of my books. I just always want there to be some story, some lesson that I can pass on that I have learned. But it is, you know, Obviously the first one is don't treat your friends like shit. I mean, that's that's a good start. Don't do that. And if you do, just say you're sorry, apologize, move on, you know? I mean, people make mistakes. People have bad nights. People have bad days. People have bad weeks. Like, if you can't trust your friends to be like, you know what? You acted crazy that night, but whatever. I know you're a good person. Let's move on. Like, I didn't get that with my friend. I got, you did something that I can't even tell you what it is that you did and now I'm just gonna destroy our friendship. Like, that's completely not fair. The thing is that even if these things happen to you in life, you cannot let it get you down. You cannot let it seemingly destroy you. Like, I almost let it destroy me. You can't let people shake your self-confidence that much. That those are just a few things that I wanted to take away from the story. The blush, I'm going to use the Wet n Wild Mai Tai Buy You a Drink and the Morphe M427. Light, I'm going to do just a light dusting of Opal from Becca Cosmetics on my Morphe M501 brush. That is just basically my first uh, story time video. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope it isn't like too, too long of a video. I know it's not like a happy story or anything, but it, it wasn't anything like too crazy, I didn't think, but... I don't know, just wanted to share that story with you guys since it seems like wedding stories and kind of like bridesmaids gone wrong seems to be uh, popular subjects around here. But to finish off my eyes, I'm going to use the Smashbox X-Rated Mascara. If you guys did like the story time video, please do leave that in the comments below. I really have no idea like how this video will be received, but if you like it and if you do want other stories, just please leave that in the comments below. Hopefully I didn't like be a Debbie Downer or anything. I just wanted to kind of share that with you guys. I know I got emotional once, but it just is because, you know, even though it's something that happened three years ago, it obviously had a very profound effect on my life. And I'm just an emotional person, so I, I can't really help that. I think one of the most confusing parts to me is that how did she cut me out of her life without caring at all? Like, it was like she gave no thought to it. She just one day was like, we're not friends anymore. And it really made me question our entire friendship. Like, it really made me question if our friendship was ever as strong as I always thought that it was. Truly not care about our friendship in the way that I cared about our friendship for seven years. And I think that's just one thing that like really, really trips me up is, does she miss me? Did she miss me? So I'm not sure this color is going to exactly go with the scheme, but I got these new color jolts from Maybelline and I want to try this one out. This is an orange outburst. Is it not really good for summer? Mmm, I'm really liking this. I don't have any orange in my collection, so that's why I picked this up. Thing for my get ready with me slash story time. So I hope you guys enjoyed the look that I did. If you guys enjoyed the story time, you know, it was my first time ever like saying any sort of like real personal story here on YouTube like in this format. If you guys have ever had a situation like this happen to you before, you know, leave it in the comments below. Let me know I'm not the only one out there that's just been completely dumped by a friend. Let me know. Hopefully that hasn't happened to a lot of you guys, but female friendships are very crazy and this is why I write books about them. This is the reason why. 
I write books about female friendships. If you did like the story time, please do leave that in the comments below so I know and maybe in the next couple months or so I can do another one for you guys. But I hope you will give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Uh, thank you so much for the love and support. I mean, really, that's what's given me the confidence to be able to do a story time video like this because I feel like a lot of us are friends here now. And whereas before I was a little bit worried about opening opening up as, with such a personal story with you guys, but I feel more confident now and that's because of the love and support that I'm getting from you guys. So thank you so much for that. Other than that, that's all I have for this video. I hope you will subscribe before you go and I will catch you real soon in my next one. Bye.